Liftoff will start in T minus 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition. Hello everyone and welcome to JNR Exploration and Discovery. Well in today's video I want to talk about what it's like to work for the post office. So maybe you may be thinking, how would I know he might like working for the post office? Well it just so happens that I do work for the post office. Here's my ID badge right here. Some commonly asked questions and a lot of people always wonder like what it's, a lot of people often wonder like what it would be like if they would work for the post office. So hopefully this video is going to give you guys somewhat of an idea and I'm going to be making future videos about it, about different steps in the post office. And kind of like everything that goes with that and like what it entails. But today I, I want to talk about like the training to be a mail carrier because that's what I am. I am a rural mail carrier for the post office. And it is something that a lot of people do not understand. They think, oh yeah, these people just get it. They might sort it. They, they bring it out to us. Guys, there is a lot more to it than that. There's actually facilities that they do this and it is incredible if you ever get to watch this happen your mail is actually sorted and organized and put in order by a computer system that actually knows all the addresses and it knows what order to put them in and it knows the name and the addresses and then it sorts it all together and then they put them in bands and then they are shipped out to other post offices where we get to deliver them to you guys so a lot of people often wonder what does that entail how many hours do you work a day well me i drive an llv What's an LLV? That's a long life vehicle. Their bodies are made out of aluminum, so they are a long life vehicle because they do not rust. Now, I also drive what they call a Metris. A Metris is basically a van. The hardest part for most people when they start at the post office is something that I just have to say. They are so used to using their rear view mirror to drive and everything, and none of the post office vehicles have a rear view mirror because the back of your truck if you're driving an LLV or the back of your van if you're driving a Metris or a two-ton or anything that thing along those lines it's going to be solid on the back so you do have to use your mirrors to drive and if you're not used to do that it can be a little bit freaky to you another thing that you guys probably wonder about yes you do <laughs> all their vehicles are a right-hand drive vehicle a lot of people think it's going to be hard to drive they are not the LLV trucks actually drive much like a golf cart they're extremely easy to drive. They are um, there's training courses. You get about three weeks worth of training before they ever put you out on the road because they want to know you know what you're doing because you are a federal employee. You're the same thing as an FBI agent. You just don't have any authority, obviously. But any kind of federal agencies, Border Patrol, FBI, the U.S. Marshal Service, they're all federal federal law enforcement agencies. You are a federal employee. Just like them or somebody in the military would be, soldiers, you are a federal employee and you're under the direction of the government. Now, a lot of people think, well, it, it could be astounding. We do have a lot of rules that we have to follow, but we also get a lot of benefits. For example, did you know that if you assault, if you assault your mail carrier, this is something that a lot of people don't think about because, but, but it does happen, guys. If you assault your, if you assault your mail carrier, it's automatic 25 years in prison automatically once you're found guilty automatically 25 years so guys and you gotta understand that we're out there doing our best and you have to understand this a lot of people wonder about some of the things that we deal with i'm going to talk about that as well so when you're going into the mailboxes you're reaching in to pull out mail that people may be mailing or sticking things in there you do encounter some weird things Mainly it's spiders and stuff because they're dark, they're cool, that's where they like being. But you might pull out a snake on occasion. There might be some other weird things in there that you pull out on occasion. Um, if you're allergic to wasps or bees, may not be the job for you because we do encounter a lot of that in the summertime. Now, the biggest thing is about the LLVs too also in the summertime. Speaking of that, they don't have air conditioners. Well, they do, but they don't work. It blows the same temperature as the outside air is. So if it's 110 degrees outside... The air blowing in is going to be 100 degrees. It's just the way that it is, and it's the way that, unfortunately, that it has to be. And they do have heaters. The heaters, though, you you got to remember that you're driving with your window down as a mail carrier. So the heaters do not really work all that well. Big question 
the that a lot of people ask when they're going through orientation. Do you have to buy your own uniforms? There's rural carriers, which is what I am, and there's a city carrier. City carriers have to wear their own uniforms. Rural carriers can wear whatever they want. I usually wear something, but what I got on right now, t-shirt, jacket, anything else in between there. I will say, though, it is a good idea for some mail carriers to wear a uniform because sometimes we are after after dark and you're coming up to people's houses and they may not actually recognize that. So that is something that if you start and they don't tell you that, you might, might want to consider that. You, you do have to buy them yourself, but it's just a total tra trading. If you work there long enough, it's just this what it is. I'm also what they call a non-career position. What does that mean? I'm a post office employee. I'm a federal employee. But I don't get all the, the full benefits of a what a full carrier would get. You have to wait a full year before you get full insurance through them. So if you're somebody that has maybe some medical issues to where you need a lot of insurance coverage, may not be the job for you. And that is just something that, unfortunately, it has to be that way. And you have to wait at least one full year of working as a non-career before you can try to move into a career position. One of the great things, though, about the post office guys, if you're looking for a job, they are hiring all over the place right now. They need a lot of people. COVID really spiked up their their numbers some years back, so you do have to deliver. There's a lot of mail to be delivered, and there are fewer and fewer people to do it every year, it seems like. So if you're interested in a position like that, we do get federal benefits, guys. They're quite good. Um, the pay is decent starting out, but... We are so we are like a union too. We are unionized as a post office, so the union dues are really cheap. You're not paying that much; it's like twenty four dollars a month or twenty three dollars a month. So, if that's something else that you're interested in, if you want to work for the post office, that is something that you can also think about if you about if you really want to. Post office has all kinds of positions too, guys. I just have to say this: you can be a janitor. They do have their own law enforcement agency. They're postal inspectors but they are federal agents the same way that any other law enforcement agency would be just like the FBI but they are there you gotta remember that every time that you enter a post office and a lot of people don't think about this it is a federal building it is federally protected under under law so something that a lot of people don't think about big questions um, I, th I talked about the snakes and everything banned mailboxes what is something that everybody has that uh goes wolf that's right dogs dogs is something that i really that we really uh this is uh one reason why a lot of us it's not because because we're lazy but and they really prefer it if you can help getting out of the truck because it's just something that we try to avoid but if you're walking up there with a package and a dog um, starts to attack you they do give you some tools to trade this right here is dog repellent what it is is just pepper spray. It's pepper spray, spray them in the eyes with this, and they're going to back down. It does happen more often than what you think. It is something that unfortunately happens a lot more often, and sometimes you got to get like medical attention for it if you do get get bit by a dog that you think like maybe rabid, rabid. You might have to go get a rabies shot. Just part of being a United States Postal Service, you know, delivery personnel. Now, I mentioned a couple of the vehicles that are driven. I only drive two of them as of right now. Some post offices, and that depends on the post office that you're going to work for. There is some post offices, I know for a fact that the one over in Joplin, Missouri, the girl actually went through the orientation with us. She had to learn how to drive five vehicles, and it was kind of freaking her out because she was 21 and... Had some driving experience, but some of the vehicles can be intimidating. Again, you can't see out the back like real well, and some of the some of the mirrors. The cool thing about the LLVs, though, the small the small little mail trucks that you see going down the road, though, guys, is you can see almost 360 degrees if your mirrors are set properly like they should be. Now, they do get a little bit tricky, but they top out at 50 miles an hour, so we don't take them out on the interstate because you would get like ran over out there for sure. It just they don't have enough put put power to do that, but there are some other advantages, and they're actually really easy to drive. Just like just like what I said, they drive very similar to a golf cart. A golf cart, you know, being they have a wide turning radius, and 
that is one thing that we try to avoid is we try to avoid backing up because that lessens the danger. Now, there is a time of when you will have to back up, obviously. But we have these big old signs on our dashes that say avoid backing up whenever possible. And that's just there to remind us that we shouldn't be backing up. And it is true. Whenever you're hearing a vehicle like that, you can be the best in the world at it, but you still might miss something that's behind you or it could come out of nowhere. So they want us to try to avoid backing up whenever possible. Now, I will say this. The vehicles are not as intimidating after you get in them and actually drive them. When you see that, a lot of people are freaked out by the right wheel driving. And actually, it's not that, that much different. It's just everything's backwards. And everything's backwards. I mean, everything is backwards. You put it in gear, you know, everything is... Everything just seems backwards. I mean, and on some of the vans that we drive, they're that new age technology. So, like, it doesn't actually... I mean, it has a shifter, but you have to hold it, like, up and then keep it to go up in reverse or down. It, or, like, down for reverse and up for drive. or It's just stuff like that. I, I think I said that right. But it's just some of those things that just... That scares a lot of people, especially having to drive on the right-hand side. It does take some getting used to, but but once you get used to it, it's just so... You actually get to where you're actually going to the right side of your vehicle because you drive those so much. If you guys are looking for a job at the post office, I will say that you won't find a better job out there benefits-wise. It may take you some time to get going. They are kind of backed up right now. They don't quite have enough people to train, at least in the area that I'm in. They don't. But stay on it, guys. And if they start sending you those emails, guys, be sure to stay on top of it. It takes it takes a long time. I mean, by the time that you actually apply to the time that all the emails are sending you doing that, and you do have to go fingerprinting, you do have to do a lot of the background checks, and you got to fill out a long background check form and everything. But, guys, it is worth it in the end by the time that you get done with it. So that was kind of the basics of it. You do get – I'm going to make a future video, though – about the difference between city carriers and rural carriers and start hitting on some differences in that. And that will actually be in the next video, guys. God bless each and every one of you. I'm Jared with General Exploration and Discovery. Subscribe and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of our weekly uploads.